Hi, it's Alistair at Electric Scotland. This is my uh, usual video for the this week's newsletter for March the 23rd, 2018. Um, so, what's happened this week? Well, I was away on Monday because I was uh, invited to a special birthday party for my friend Nola in Toronto. Um, she doesn't normally have a birthday party, but for some reason she decided that this year she would have one. And she got her um, son-in-law Alex, who runs Sync, the catering company in Toronto, to, to run it for her. So, had a wonderful time, I must confess. Uh, all the family were there, and all the grandkids and everything, and uh, uh, a lot of friends from work, and from the Templars, and so forth. So. Had a really good time. Must must say, I really enjoyed it. Uh, Alex did some great roast beef, Yorkshire pudding, uh, roast potatoes, even. Um, we had roast pork. Uh, then there was um, uh, scallops stuffed with cheese and ham. Uh, a very nice sauce, and we had cheese with a range of uh, range of cheeses and nice biscuits and stuff and. A good birthday cake and yeah so it was great plenty of booze around the place um they actually kept all the beer outside because it was minus one so it was optimum uh, temperature to keep the beer nice and cold and we had a whole range of different beers there exotic brands and whatnot and pretty well anything in the uh, alcohol so we had vodka gin whiskey uh, all kinds of stuff. Really great. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Probably drank and ate far too much, mind you. <laughs> anyway, got back on Tuesday and time to let my cleaning lady in because she comes every two weeks. Uh, uh, does a good job for me. Anyway, uh, on to the uh, Scottish news for, for this week. Um, Quite a wee range of stories. Uh, first one was use Brexit to promote free trade and prosperity across the world, is this first story. So when it comes to foreign aid, the UK is the second most generous country in the world. And by 2021, we are expected to give 14.5 billion to the poorest countries through the government alone. And that's not including the huge volume of private donations to charities that we make. This speaks to the compassion and decency of the British people. Really interesting article. Uh, so I hope you enjoy reading that one. Next one is Boldness in Business Person of the Year, Sir James Dyson. Well, as you all know, I'm a real fan of Sir James Dyson. So this is a wee write-up about his, uh, of the Boldness in Business Person of the Year award. He says that the UK exits from Europe will only encourage innovation. Then the next story that caught my eye was Darien Colony failure has lessons for Russian standoff. As you said, Scots, not England and Kim William, were mostly to blame for the disaster that paved the way for the 1707 Act of Union, says John McKendrick. So again, I thought, well, you know, if, you, you, if you've read Scottish history, you know all about the Darien scheme. So I think it's quite interesting to have a read at that and get his view on it. Next thing is really for the Scots. It's a smoke alarm rules to apply to all homes in Scotland. It says all homes in Scotland are set to have a minimum number of smoke alarms after a 30-year-old law is amended. So I thought, well, you need to know about that because if you have a fire and you don't have the required number of uh, smoke alarms, then you can lose your insurance coverage or get fined. So it's important to know about that. Next was the understandable anger of British fishermen. It says the fishing community has been persistently abandoned by Westminster. And if you look at the latest Brexit uh, discussions going on, it looks like the British fishermen have been dumped yet again. Then the next article is the true cost of customs union membership. It says agricultural tariffs are more than three times higher than average EU tariffs. And I think it's important to know about that. And then the next one I picked up was Scottish businesses sign up to good to go doggy bag scheme. 
It's a problem that has plagued restaurants for decades, but now a new campaign has been launched to tackle plate waste. Really interesting article that, and I think it's worthwhile knowing about it. Maybe if they don't have that in your country, you could inquire, why not? And another one that caught my eye was pupils get tossing the caber lessons in Prince Pilot. It says tossing the caber and tug of war uh, are to be taught in schools after the Prince of Wales backed a project to encourage more young people to compete in Highland Games. Then MSPs defeat the NSP plans to abolish the Forestry Commission's role. Since opposition MSPs have defeated the SNP's plans to abolish the Forestry Commission's role in Scotland. And I highlighted that because, to be honest, the SNP continue to do power grabs. They're trying to amalgamate everything and take charge of everything in Scotland. And frankly, it's nothing but a power grab by the SNP. And uh, again, I, so I, I just wanted to celebrate that, that the SNP have been defeated for another paragraph, which is great news. Then another that caught my eye was the Royal Highland Show is a huge boost to the Scottish economy. It says the Royal Highland Show is now in its 178th year, an incredible achievement for any event. Then the next story I've got for you is iconic British firm reveals shock sums it sends to Brussels. It says iconic British sugar refiners Tate and Lyle said the European Union forces the company to pay a 35% duty on imports before they're allowed to sell their products on the British market. And I think that's just, to me that just reinforces the fact that we can look forward to reduction in food prices after Brexit. So, I mean, it's important to read these stories and know what's going on. Then the next one that caught my eye was poverty and inequality on the rise in Scotland. It says poverty rates in Scotland are continuing to rise, official figures have suggested. Not going up a grave. The thing is, it's rising and not decreasing. And, you know, it occurs to me that for all the Labour and SNP left-wing agendas, they don't seem to be able to close the, the wage gap or, or help the poorest of our people. They keep saying, we represent you, but they don't seem to achieve anything. And I, I, I don't really understand how they can get away with claiming left-wing leanings and not do anything to sort this poverty gap. Then the final story I have for you is Deterring Russian aggression requires insight and determination. It said there is not that much in Russia that works. They have practically no exports except oil, gas and commodities, which in part is the reason their economy has been in steep decline lately. But there's still some things they do well. And I thought you might like to know about that one. Then, uh, not much in Electric Canadian this particular week, but uh, I put up the 1930 volume of the Transactions of Canadian Society of Civil Engineers. Some interesting stories within this. Uh, basically, it's the address of the retiring president, Brigadier General C.H. Mitchell, and I thought you might be interested just reading that. Uh, it's also aerial surveying as applied to engineering problems, airships, aviation in Canada, and there's also an interesting biography on Sir Sanford Fleming, and then there's a Buy Canadian Products campaign and development of radio in Canada and, and obviously more obituaries. So, I mean, it's an excellent read, that, uh, that uh, these transactions. Then I've got Romance of the Grain Growers of Saskatchewan. It's history, aims and objects. And then uh, finally we've got a couple of stories from Conrad Black. President Trump's career breakthrough is one, and what a disaster the Ontario PC leadership race was. Then in Electric Scotland, we've got a memoir of James, Sir James Dalrymple. He was the first Viscount Stair. Um, I've, li I've linked to that book at the foot of the Dalrymple page in our Scottish nation. Then I've got Memoirs of His Own Life by Sir James Melville of Hall Hill. He was an eminent uh, 
courtier and uh, what is her ambassador in various countries of Europe. Uh, and I just thought you might find that of interest. Then I've got a, a, a story about Hugh Claghorn. He was a forester and Scottish laird, an unsung pioneer, a collector and a major benefactor to the RBGA, that's the Royal Botanical Gardens. And there's a video about him on the RBG site, which I've given you a link to uh, from there. So, again, again, it's amazing the work that uh, these guys do. And often we never hear about them, you know. So we've heard, heard of him and you'll learn more about him. <coughs> <coughs> I also found um, a book, the Calcutta Review, 1867. Uh, I kind of stumbled across this publication, but I thought it was interesting, so I thought I'd uh, I put an issue up for you to read, and, and I think there's more of those uh, issues, so if, if you like it, you can probably Google it and probably find others you can have a read at. Then I found a book called Sketching Grounds. It's with numerous illustrations in colours and monotint by eminent living artists. It's edited by Charles Holm. Uh, in, in, in the books in, was produced in 1909. It includes some very interesting pictures of Scotland, but also England, Wales and New York. So I thought you might like browsing through that one. Then I have a book on the Isle of Man. Um, it's got a, a foreword by A.W. Moore, who is the Speaker of the House of Keys. And there's 32 colour plates by Donald Maxwell in it. So again, I thought that might be... Uh, a, a good read for you. Then I have um, an interesting film I found. It's The North East Corner. It's a Scottish office film made in 1945. Um, I, because it's around the Peterhead area, I've added it to the Peterhead page in the Statistical Account of Scotland. So you can read about the area there as well as watch this. Uh, I think the film's about 45 minutes, so it's a good it has got some great old uh, black and white photographs with it as well. Then another one I found which I really enjoyed was Bothy Ballad and Photos from Old Farming Days of North East Scotland. It's a great collection. I've added a link to the, this compilation to the Food of Our Songs page. <coughs> Frankly, I listened to quite a few of them. really enjoyed it. And there's a very good uh, Ate Some Real that they show you dancing, and by golly, these dancers are going to be really fit to do that, you know, so. Then I have the Sporting Review. Uh, I found three issues of this. It's uh, a monthly chronicle of the turf, the chase, and other sports, edited by Craven. don't know who Craven is, but... Anyway, I had a wee read through it, and I thought it was quite interesting, so I thought I'll, I'll put the three uh, what, uh, volumes I found, and you can have a wee read through them. Uh, the story this week is actually about um, business premises suspected of making 200 million illegal calls has been searched by the Information Commissioner's Office. That's the ICO, in, that's, the, that's in, in, in Scotland. But I, I thought to myself, you know, I think it's good to read that story because, uh, as I've commented in the newsletter, we have the same problem in Canada with duct cleaning services. And there's a whole ton of computer calls you get nowadays. And I think it's just unacceptable. And I don't know what the situation is in the US or Australia or New Zealand, but I certainly know here in Canada we get a whole host of these people phoning all the time. And I hate getting a phone call from a computer, I have to say. As soon as I know it's a computer, I just put the phone down on it. So, anyway, that's the kind of summary for, for this week. So. Uh, you know, actually some very good reads from the, the news stories. Uh, so I, I hope you'll enjoy reading some of those anyway and listening to the songs and watching that old Scottish office video. So, there you go. Hope you enjoy it. And as always, I'll put a link uh, to the actual newsletter where you can get all the links to these stories uh, underneath the, the video. And, and I might just add that um, I have been getting some comments on YouTube about the video. And not all the comments are actually to do with the newsletter. Some people uh, basically comment on something else uh, in there. So 
But if you want to read the comments, you really need to watch it on YouTube because if you read it on Electric Scotland where I've embedded the video, that doesn't show the comments. So you have to click on the YouTube itself to go to YouTube to watch the video. Or you can watch the video on Electric Scotland, but at the end, click the YouTube so you can go and read any comments that have come through. Okay, there you go. That's it uh, this week. I uh, hope you have a good weekend when it comes. And... Uh, Look forward to talking to you next week. Cheers.